Good morning, everybody. I'm Nancy Buffard. I'm an AmeriCorps member serving at the McKinney Center in Jonesboro, Tennessee. And we are going to work on crocheted Easter eggs. But first I want to talk about sculptural crochet because that's what excites me about doing the eggs. I get excited about doing sculptural crochet. So I want to just talk a little bit about what that is. Sculptural crochet is where you use yarn to build up crochet stitches into a three-dimensional form. And this is just a picture of a, a world I found online on the Spruce Crafts. And you can see it's a whole little world created out of stitches. And I think that's kind of interesting and fun. And I wanted to talk about some of the things that people do with sculptural crochet. One of them is um, the Crochet Coral Reef. This was a project that was by two sisters and it was an homage to the Great Barrier Reef and it worked with using crochet to make all kinds of sea forms but also was an opportunity for people to get together and learn how to crochet, learn science, learn math. I thought that was a fun project. When I was a teenager, I made vegetable, well actually fruit pot holders for my grandmother. She taught me how to crochet. These are my old patterns. So you can use sculptural crochet to make fruits and vegetable pot holders. You can use crochet to make flowers lots of types of flowers and people also use it to make wearables so this could be a scarf could be a necklace I guess it's what you call it and um, it uses different sculptural forms and also uses some spiral things which I really like to work with this is a book I picked up that I thought was really interesting because this guy made really stiff forms and he accomplished that by using much thicker yarn than what the gauge for a crochet hair calls for and when we talk about that there's this concept of weights of yarn so our pattern that we're going to work with today uses a four or a medium weight which is a worsted weight and then there's a, a yarn system where there are recommended hook sizes to get a particular size of material if you use a hook with that size yarn. And for our eggs, which look like this, you can see there's been different shapes and sizes of yarn used in different size hooks. This is the one that follows most closely to the pattern. Um, we use a hook that is a bit smaller than the recommended yarn size and what that does is make a tighter stiffer form that kind of holds its, its shape a little better. Another thing that people do with crochet is teach math. This woman used it to talk about hyperbolic geometry and you can see these crenellations are things that we find in nature with the sea forms but also with things like lettuce but she used it to um, teach people a concept about math. And a final thing I want to show you that was kind of fun for me uh, is crochet dolls. So I learned to do crochet dolls with this and I um, make mine with carved avocado faces and here is an example of one that I made as a gift for somebody in the person um, it ended up coming back to me after she wasn't here and I want you to just notice that the bottom little bit here kind of looks like the bottom of some of our eggs so similar increase decrease concept happens with the dolls and then some of the things I like to do with sculptural crochet is make hats so there's spirals there's all kinds of different shapes here on top of these hats and I like to do wall hangings. Here are some example hats. Here's some dolls. And I just brought some of the things with me today to see. So this was a little bee's nest I made. These are bowls. You can see they hold their shape. Will you show the bee's nest again? I've had a request to show 
the bee's nest again. So I, this was actually a friend showed me a pattern online and I changed it to make it a way that I liked it. I've had this around for a while. I love doing, trying to mimic natural forms. Even when I walk around the McKinney Center and I look at the, what's growing on the bushes, out here I get excited because I think, oh, I could go outside and make those flowers in crochet. So I, I love doing sculptural crochet. So just other little three-dimensional things. This, these are things I did years ago. It's a little bowl, but also little miniature fruits. And this is a little carrot, I guess, kind of an abstract concept. And this is something I did years ago that had, um, I didn't actually do the sweater myself, but I did the container and I did these little tiny eggs um, years ago. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna make eggs. And I showed you these. So they all, these all follow the same pattern. They just used different size yarn. And like I said before, this is probably about the size it will come out to. It's got stuffing inside. If you went really small and really stiff, you wouldn't even need the stuffing inside. But it uses um, single crochet and it starts with a magic ring. So we're gonna work on learning how to do that. It's a cinch circle, it works in a spiral. It uses single crochet and increases and decreases coming up and we finish off. So there is a pattern for that online that I'm following and teaching exactly to and it looks like this. There's a YouTube video for the pattern. So it's all free on Be Hooked. And that's what we're gonna do. And if you all are interested, we would even have a Zoom time to practice making the egg together. So that is something we are offering. Here is where the pattern in video is for learning that, for the, to get the instructions yourself or to um, learn by watching the video. So the great thing about the video is you can just stop at any time and practice or go backwards if you didn't get what they were saying. So we're gonna start today with, oh, I wanted to show you one other little thing, sorry. Amigurumi miniatures. <laughs> These are all made with crochet. Pretty cool, huh? So we're gonna start today, I've got my instructions here. I'm using just a regular acrylic worsted weight yarn. We also have beautiful yarns made right here in town. These are some yarns that I got down at the Yarn Asylum, which is down in the Millstring Makers Market. And there is a farm called Junebug um, Farm in town that raises goats that we make yarn out of. So just in case you're wondering of where you might get some materials and yarn, we actually produce yarn right here in Jonesboro and we sell it here in Jonesboro. So this pattern starts with a magic ring, which is a cinch ring. And I, th I think that getting started might be one of the most challenging things to do. I find it um, for different patterns, different ways to start can be um, kind of frustrating because you're starting with just a raw end of yarn and your working end. And in this case, we are going to loop the yarn so that the raw end faces us. And, and I'm right-handed, so tend to work from right to left. This involves a loop around the yarn. See how it crosses over right there? So that I can pull up a slip. So this, this movement of coming under and pulling the yarn through, that's a slip. And we do it one more time, it makes one little loop in the hook and one more time is considered a chain. And I'm left here with this loop and what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be able to pull the end after I get my, all my stitches on it and make a really tight circle as we see at the very beginning of our eggs. So some of the other things that I'm using for this project are is a stitch marker, which in this case I'm using a safety pin. And I also have a counter 
to tell me which row that I'm on. So it's going to be important because we're working in a spiral to be able to keep track of what row we're on. We're going to create some stitches on this circle and then we're going to increase, make a little body and then decrease back and we need to keep track of where we are. I also pulled out the bikini centers ticket counter. You could use that for stitch counter. You could just write hash marks on a piece of paper, however it works for you to count. So this is what it looks like at the very, very beginning. And I'm going to start single crocheting. And a single crochet is a two-step process. And the way that I build up the stitch with a single crochet is with my loop on the hook, I come under the piece and put the yarn through the hook and draw it through so that there are two loops on the hook. And then I draw the yarn through one more time. And that makes a single crochet. So that's the stitch that we use throughout this pattern. So that's my first single crochet and the pattern calls for six on the first row. So I just made one. I'm going to do six total, two. And you can already see one of the risks with using a smaller needle. This is a 3.75, a little smaller than what they called for is because there are different um, strands wound together, the different plies in the yarn. When you have a smaller hook, you might get caught in the yarn. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure we get all the way around the yarn when we loop it through. So two single crochet, I got to count, two, three, four, five, six, and that's my first row. And now I'm ready to start my second row, but we're not going to do anything that really distinguishes the second row, which is why I need a stitch counter. So I'm pulling my end to cinch up this circle and make it really tight. And then to start my next row, I need to come into the first stitch. You can see that this little loop around is what we keep attaching forward and it forms a ring. And when I connect to the next stitch, I need to come under the two parts that make up that ring into that hole. And that's how I connect to the next stitch. So I'm going to make a single crochet and the first stitch of every row, except for the last row in this egg, is a single crochet. So the way that I found that I'm comfortable keeping track of where I am with my stitch marker and starting a new count is to do a single crochet in the first stitch of the, the row, although it's hard to tell what a roll is, we're working in a spiral, and then to place my stitch marker, which is my safety pin. And there's lots of stitch markers, lots of ways you can use stitch markers. A lot of people don't believe in using stitch markers, but I've got to do it with this piece. So this next row, row two, is an increased row and we're putting two single crochets in each of the stitches. So we'll end up with 12 stitches and the pattern tells you for every row how many stitches you should have at the end of the row. So I'm going to go back into that same stitch and do another single crochet. And I'm going to do two single crochets throughout across the row. So I'll end up with 12 stitches all together. And I'll go through and do that and show you at the end of the row what that looks like. So now I am at the end of row two. I have 12 stitches and I'm getting ready to start row three. And so I'm going to, this is the way I do it. You can figure out your own way to place your stitch mark and start the next row. But I'm going to do my single crochet in the first stitch. Whoops, see, I'm splitting stitches. And that sometimes different types of yarn split more easily, sometimes just this, this crochet hook. So once I've got that first one in, I know I can place my stitch marker. And this row does one single crochet in each stitch. So we are going to again have 12 stitches at the end of the row. So I'm going to go across the row and show you what it looks like at the end. I'm at the end of the third row, 12 stitches, and I'm getting ready to do the single crochet 
as the first stitch of the fourth row. And the fourth row is an increased row. And the way it increases is it does one single crochet in a stitch and then two single crochets in the next stitch. So I've got my first single crochet. So in my next stitch, I'm going to do two single crochets. So one, two. And then repeat that across the row. One, one, two. And you'll notice that this is curving, so we're going to make it curve this way. Um, and again, I'm working from right to left. So if you're left-handed, I think that this B-hooked pattern even has um, instructions for left-handed people. So we're going to work across this row. There will be 18 stitches at the end of the row, and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay. I'm at the end of row number four and I'm getting ready to start row number five. So I'm going to do my single crochet and replace my stitch marker. And then this next row five, just as a single crochet in each stitch. So I did the first one, I'll go around the row and I'll show you what it looks like at the end of the row. Ready? I'm at the end of row um, five now, getting ready to do um, begin row six. I've got 18 stitches right now. We're going to build up to 24. I'm going to do my single crochet and place my stitch marker. And then this is an increased row. So this one increases just a little bit differently. So you're going to have to keep track of how you do it. So in this case, in this row, we do a single crochet in two stitches. So I have single crochet, single crochet, then a double crochet. It's Nancy. I can't believe I said double crochet there. The increases do not use a double crochet. They use two single crochets in one stitch. A double crochet is a whole different thing. So it's every, it's sort of like a set of three stitches. So I'm gonna work, work across my row that way. Single crochet, single crochet, and then double crochet. Okay, go ahead and do that. Now I'll show you what it looks like at the end. Okay. Okay, we're at the end of row six. I have 24 stitches on. I'm going to start row seven. And we're gonna do the same thing for the next six rows. And that is just to do one stitch in each stitch. So one single crochet in each stitch going around and you still get to keep track of your rows so you know when to end. So that's it. We're going to do that until we get through row 12 and the next row that we start will be row 13. Okay, we have finished row 12, which I had to um, use my stitch counter to get here because there was no way I could keep track of all those same rows. So I'm going to do um, my single crochet in the first row of 13. Move my stitch marker and now we're going to do decreases. And the way this pattern decreases, it does an invisible um, decrease. So this row is going to decrease every third stitch. So we do a single crochet, single crochet, and we're gonna come into just the front part of the loops, and that's what makes it an invisible decrease. So I've got my first single crochet, sec second single crochet, and now I'm gonna do a decrease. So I'm going into the first front part of that loop and just bringing the yarn up onto the hook and then doing that one more time. So it's like that first part of the single crochet, but I end up with three loops on my hook and then I draw the yarn all the way through. So I've decreased. And because I'm in the front, it's taking some of that bulk off. So it's gonna end up looking really smooth. So we're gonna do that across the row. Single crochet, single crochet, and then a decrease. And we'll go across the row and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. We just finished round 13. So I've got 13 on my stitch marker. 
stitch counter and I'm going to go into my first stitch that's marked for round 14. Do my single crochet, mark that, move my stitch counter. And this next row is a decrease row. And we're kind of going back in the opposite way of the way that we increased. So now we are going to do this one single crochet and then we do a decrease in the next two. So I'm in the front of my loops and then I decrease. So single crochet and then I'm going to decrease. So the pattern calls it single crochet two together. So we're going to do that across the row and then we're going to stuff the egg. So let's just work across the row. It doesn't take too long to get across at this point. It's kind of a quick egg, isn't it? A little bit of patience. Almost there. And now I'm going to put some fluffy stuff. So I've got this bag that's got fill in it and we just lightly stuff it in so you decide how firm you want it but just so it'll, the egg will hold its shape on its own. We stuff it. I'm going to be able to do one more row so I don't want to get caught up in my stuffing too much my last row keep it out of the way so I think I'll just do that and because I'm at my last row that I'm going to crochet I'm just going to get rid of this and for my the last row which is row 15 we decrease every stitch so every set of two stitches I am decreasing single crochet two together in the invisible method at the front of the stitches. So we do that six times, sort of back to our beginning count. Almost there. One more, I'm just gonna pull through. So now I can snip, leave a little bit of yarn length that, that I can then thread through a needle. And the instructions weave through quite a bit. Um, when I tried that, it built up extra yarn and I didn't like it so much. So, so the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to kind of come in a couple times to cinch some of these stitches and then I can kind of pull the yarn, put the needle so it comes through the center and I can pull the yarn back out and to me that makes it smoothest here and then I can just snip the yarn off and voila we have a lovely egg. So if you want to practice that over Zoom together and have a session let us know here at the McKinney Center and we will work on setting up a time for you. Thanks everyone.